morning and welcome to my YouTube channel. So this morning, Willie and I have ventured to a place south of Glasgow called Dalry. If I turn the camera around, you'll see we've come to the Lynn Glen because the Glen Glen is famous for a waterfall called the Lynn Spout. So join us and let's see where this wee journey takes us this morning. Willie and I have never been on this trail before so we're kind of finding our way so we're just following the signs but if you look over the bridge here we've got some quite nice cloud we've sat in the car for half an hour waiting on the rain stopping because the forecast that we followed is about a half hour late the water that you can see here is called the car water and that's from, fed from the car reservoir. So we're just looking for the path to take and then that way we'll be on the trail to go and find the Lynn Spout waterfall. Well, if anybody's coming up, it's actually pretty straightforward. It's pretty well signposted. Although I'm not so sure this gate's the easiest to get through. As you'll see, there's a metal bollard there. So this is the trail and we'll catch up with you soon. So as you walk along the trail, we've come against a second gate. Well, there are no gates, it's like a metal style which doesn't move so it's quite tight to get through but what we have noticed I believe on this trail there's a whole bunch of different carvings and this is uh, toadstools little stools, it's actually quite nice and some of the roots of the trees are quite nice as well but we can hear the water so we must be getting close um, so we'll join back soon as we get closer I don't know if you can see the falls through the trees there. It looks like we have a very steep climb ahead of us. We were looking for a path that followed um, the river, but there's nothing, nothing obvious. I mean, that looks like a path down. It looks quite steep and slippy. But what we'll do is we'll keep walking just to see if there's another way down because we are conscious that it's just finished raining. It's wet and slippy everywhere. And um, we have got our waterproof trousers on right enough, so that'll help. Here's another dig out here. Um, oh, that could be, here's a way down. So we've got some steps that'll help us get down. So what we'll do is we'll take our time. We'll get down to the bottom and we'll catch back soon. All right, so I've climbed to the bottom. Well, I've climbed halfway down, and as you can see, that's the kind of rough trail that you've got to follow. But as I've came halfway down, I've left Wally up the top, as well as taking shots of the waterfalls that are further up. I've got this composition where I thought this tree could be quite a nice leading line. We've got some of the foliage here, which, because of the rain, has saturated in a strong green. And then we've got the waterfalls, coming down here and as you can see there's like steps as well that might make a nice feature but I need to get a wee bit closer in order to capture that so I thought what I'll do here is I'll take a landscape shot and I'm going to do a portrait shot and when I've finished I'll share those images with you now Alright so sometimes when you come to a new location and you're not quite sure, because I've climbed all the way down this hillside and because of the conditions, you've just got to be really careful and take your time because what you can start to do is look for compositions on the way down because ideally I want to get to the base of the falls or go further back. I've got my wellies on and I can stand in the water if it's shallow 
and get a shot from a distance looking up because all the rain that we've had lately, these waterfalls are pretty healthy with water. So what I'm trying to do here is get a composition in a landscape where I've got this waterfall coming in from the left, this waterfall on the right, and then when I'm finished, I'm going to zoom in probably in a portrait mode and I'll get that cascade of water coming down. I've got an eighth of a second because I want to have the water not fully milky but fairly streaky. I've got f4.5 but I'll increase that to f11 which means I can play about with my shutter speed and my ISO. But failing that, what I'll do is I'll take some images here and if these images turn out I'll share these images with you now. myself in quite a pickle so I've tried to get it's too wet in front of the waterfall so I've crawled through this gap and as you can see I've got a gap here under a tree so I'm gonna have to take my backpack off to get under it because the water's too deep at the edge of the waterfall to kind of walk round but honestly we didn't have to get ourselves in some predicaments so what I'll do is I'll I'll crawl through here and then hopefully I can get a decent spot to take a wider, further back shot of the falls. Made it. I'll turn the camera around. So that bit there is those sets of trees. It's what I had to crawl under because getting too close to the waterfall, getting too much spray on the lens. So now I'm going to have to kind of navigate my way further down river. But as you can see, there's tons of fallen trees that are just giving me obstructions. But when I look up, we've got a fallen tree here. There's some nice water effects on some of the water. But if I can get further down to that corner, I might be able to get quite a nice image and reduce the amount of spray that's coming on my lens. Let's catch up if I can reach that point. So, I'll tell you, this is very very tricky down here I'm just I had to go back to my bag to get a claw because even although I'm quite a distance for the falls they're big falls with a lot of spray so I'm just trying to clean my filter and uh, dry it off so I don't know how many chances I'll get for a shot because I suspect where Wally is with the smaller falls it'll be much easier because there's no spray but let me sort this try and get a couple of shots it's quite deep and slippy where I'm standing as well alright so that's nice so what I'll probably do is just isolate the one fall on the right because ideally what I want is I want to use the water I want to use the water that's coming down as a leading line. So I'll have that foot on the top left hand third, all the way down and then the water will flow out in my image. That's the plan. Let's see if this works. So I'm shooting it an eighth of a second, f6.3 at the moment. I'm just going to tweak up my f-stop to f8. I've got one sixtieth of a second ISO and I've got the water the way I like. I'm just checking. I've got the, there's no spots on the filter. I'm now going to incorporate the two waterfalls below. The second waterfall on the far left, pretty obscured by the trees. I'll turn the camera over. I'll get a portrait shot. And when I'm finished taking these images, I'll share these images with you now. I'm going to head back up 
um, to catch up with Wally at the top of the waterfalls and try and catch the other cascades. I've taken two or three different shots closer to the shoreline. So they've been close up shots. So what I'll do is, if they turn out, I'll share those images with you and I'll catch you up at the top of the waterfall, all going well. the scene we've got now we've got all these cascades of waterfalls we've got all these fallen trees and the first composition I'm going to walk into the top of the waterfall and then shoot up and see what kind of uh, images we can get there so let me get to the centre right so I'm just walking along the top of the waterfall I'm not going too close to the edge because these rocks are actually quite slippy underfoot especially with the wellies on, but what I'm trying to do is get centred safely enough that I've got the fall right in front of me. Right, so we've got a wee bit of a sturdiness challenge here. Right, here we go. What have we got? Wow, this is absolutely stunning. And the other beauty is I don't have uh, spray continually coming into the camera. Right, so I need to adjust my settings here. So let's see what's the best. I'm using my histogram and I'm using my histogram because I'm just trying to get to the very edge of the highlight so I'm not clipping and then that way I can get the best of my shadows and my highlights in my image and I don't want any highlight clippings on the water either so I'm F8 uh, eighth of a second because I like that streaky water and I've increased my ISO to 600 right let's see let's go really wide and let's see what compositions we can get and uh, what I'll do is I'll switch over to this camera so from a compositional point of view, I've went really wide. What I'm trying to do is get those fall up here and flown down to the bottom right of the camera. And what I've also got is this little offshoot of falls coming down here. So I'll focus in and what we'll do is we'll take that shot. My focal point is in the third waterfall going up, but just on the rocks beside it, because as you know, you don't, fo you don't try and focus on the water because the water continually moves and it's really difficult to get a focal point on the water. So the other thing I've noticed when I took that shot is because I've got a bit of sky, the sky's blown out, but the problem with the sky is it's just clouds. So it's not really going to make a huge amount of difference. So what I'll do is I'll tilt the camera down and when I tilt the camera down, I eliminate the sky, but it gives me a massive foreground of water. I'll take that shot because that might be quite a nice image. Right, so what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to zoom in a little bit further. What I do like in this composition is there's some brown ochre colours in the beech trees and the brown leaves with the green saturated um, moss really stands out and it's really nice and it might just give us that wee bit extra pop in the water because when I look at the water the water is quite caramelly brown but in the camera it's actually pure white because it's capturing it in street so I'll take a number of shots at this point and when I'm finished I'll share those images with you now Right, so I'm going to go low here because what I've got, sit there, I've got quite a nice vertical shot here with the rapids cascading down and uh, it actually could make quite a nice wee image. So I'm F8 an eighth of a second. I'm still using ISO 160. I'm just trying to see if I've managed to freeze it. I've got the bubbles. There's a lot of bubbles there, so I'll zoom in a wee bit tighter. Because what I'm trying to do is just get the water streaks of the water. But what I'll also do is I'll turn the camera around because there's a quite a nice wee flow of water coming through these rocks here. And they're actually quite nice. So what I'm not sure of is how photogenic this wee rock pool actually is. I quite like the, the flow of the water coming from little trickle on these rocks on the left. And then you've got a big burst of water coming down on the far right hand side so I'll take a couple of shots here and then what I'll do is I'll work my way further up the river but once I've taken these images I'll share those images with you now
Right, so this area, what I'm trying to do is just get a kind of light three quarter view of the falls. And I'll tell you what's nice when I'm standing here is at the top of the falls, there's two or three fallen trees further back up the river. And you've got that kind of misty haze just because of the rain that we had earlier. And it, it's quite a soft background. It's actually really, really nice. So I'm going to do a wide shot here. I'll then zoom in and I'll pick out other points. Again, because I'm further up river, we've got the mossy and the firm, really saturated green. The beech tree leaves are really nice and brown. And it, it's quite dark because we're in that kind of gorge area. But oh, this is absolutely lovely. I mean, really lovely. So I'll take two or three shots and I'll share those images with you now. Right, so I've come up and I'm going to use this tree as a bit of foreground interest because compositionally, will it work? Well, I've got the tree starting at the left and coming at the bottom right of my image and I've got the falls in the background and then I've got the bank in with the trees. Ah, oh, I like it. Um, let's see how it turns out and uh, let's see if it's uh, worth the shot. But what I'll do is I'm going to try and use the tree with a couple of different compositions. I might go a wee bit lower, I might go a wee bit closer and I'll try and incorporate the falls in the background as much as I can. There's no point in doing a shot, a straight shot up the tree because it's just an old banking in the back. I will have a wee nosey, I'll do a wee trial and if any of these images turn out, I'll share them with you now. I've come here, but I can't quite see underneath the falls because there's too much water. However, what I'll do is I'll make best use of where I am because I've got the falls that are actually quite nice. And if I zoom out and zoom in, I can get two different types of images just because I'm beside them. I'm being, I'm careful I'm not going too close because there's a lot of water splashing over to me. But on the left hand side, there's little trickles of water coming down at the side of the falls. And what I'll do is I'll focus in on a couple of them. I'll turn the camera over and do a portrait shot as well. And then that way we've got a vertical image because it's more in keeping with the way that the structure of that rock is and the way that the water's flowing over it. And then what I'll do is I'll lift the camera higher and I'll see if we can peek over the rock here and see if we can get a level base shot of those falls. And if any of these turn out, I'll share these with you now. this beautiful spot, give you one last look, I'm going to head up the path and see if I can find Willie and we'll catch back soon. Walking along the trail, um, oh, so this sign is telling us that this area that we're standing is the site of the old Craig Mill, so some more waterfalls, that's what we were shooting earlier. But then I've got these falls in front of me and that was the one that I'd seen further back with the trees falling down. So there's a good chance that there's a wee place to get down. That's a wee bit too steep. So I'll try and figure out how to get down and see if we can get some shots here. All right, so I managed to get down. I had a wee fall sliding down the bank in, but Hey ho, that's part of the course. So I've got these beautiful waterfalls in front of me. 
I've also got Wally at the far left who's tucked in at the side at the side of the river. So what I'm trying to do is use these trees and then I've got all these layers of waterfalls in front of me. So for a wide shot and that background's really really soft because there is a there is there's just a hint of a mist and it's really really nice. It's quite like the the is it the Orton effect. So it's like a natural Orton effect where your background's soft, diffused and a wee bit out of focus but it is absolutely and I really hope that comes out in the image so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take two or three different shots I'm going to zoom in and see if I can get a tighter crop and maximise as much as I possibly can with that fallen tree because I'm really taken with it and I think it's really nice so I'll take these images and if they work out I'll share them with you now So the trail's getting busy now. Um, I'm on the scout looking for Willie. So when we can't, when I find him, we'll catch back soon. Yeah. Right, I think we're going to finish the video here. I've not seen you all morning. Well, I've been busy. You've been busy getting busy. loads of photos. Yeah. I hope you've got. I, I think. Well, I hope I got a couple of nice ones. The only yeah. problem is I noticed my lens kept steaming up quite a lot. The spray off the falls. Well, when I moved up here, it was okay, but when I went up there, it must be warmer. Yeah. And the camera and that must be really cold. But, oh no, thanks again for chumming me again, Wally. Dragging me out my bed. <laughs> Dragging out his bed at seven in the morning. Oh, it was earlier, because you went and got a roll. <laughs> so this is the Lynn Glen. And this is the Lynn, this, the Lynn Spout Waterfall. Never been here before, it's really, really nice. We think we would come back in the autumn, because we think it could be really nice in the autumn. But anyway, thanks again to Wally. Cheers, pleasure. Here's hoping we can make a video. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed, please do, because you know it's free. And if you press the bell notification, that'll let you know the next time we post a video. So thanks very much for watching, and here's to the next video.